Hey there guys, this is Chauncey J. Kent, and welcome to another episode of Evolution. Uh, the series where I play EVE Online, and you guys watch and learn, and uh, hopefully enjoy as well. So, uh, today, I was... I decided we're going to go ahead and do some more missioning, although it's going to be a little bit different today. Uh, I wanted to do uh, some of the mining missions and uh, just kind of give you guys an uh, opportunity to experience uh, some of the different missioning styles and like the kind of different stuff you can do and whatnot. So uh, let me pop into the agent finder here. <clears throat> And we found out last time that for Hysodia, assuming I'm still pronouncing that correctly, if not, oh well, uh, we can do uh, level 2 missions, so that's what we're going to do. And so let's see what we've got here. Uh, next. Okay. Yeah, here we go. We've got a mining mission two jumps away from... Uh, High Soya Corporation. So let's set the destination there. Panala Imo? Panala Imo. Sure, we'll go with that. Alright, so uh, let me close this out and hop into my mining ship here. Uh, now, before we head out into the uh, great dark beyond, uh, I do want to go ahead and make a couple changes to the ship. Um, one thing uh, in particular with this is I want to go ahead and strip the fittings. Well, we're actually going to go to the um, the cargo hold of the ship itself and move all of these things over to the item hanger uh, because we don't want to have them necessarily... Uh, in the ship. And we're going to pop open the fittings window here and actually strip out uh, the Tech 2 harvesters. Now the reason I'm doing this is specifically because the Tech 2s uh, only work more efficiently than the Tech 1 strip miners when you're using a uh, crystal with them. Um, and the crystals are specific to a particular type of ore. Uh, now what we want to do instead is put on the Tech 1 level strip miners, uh, which will work equally well across the board on all the different types of ore, and actually have a better uh, bronze spectrum yield than the Tech 2 uh, strip miners. Um, like, these will work on anything, even without a crystal, but it works more slowly than the Tech 1 versions would. Uh, now, one other thing that I would typically like to do is actually pull the mining drones out of here and the combat drones out and put in uh, some slightly bigger combat drones just to keep uh, myself and the ship safe and replace uh, the drone navigation computer with... Um, and these two things with something a little bit beefier as far as defenses go. Um, but I don't have those things and I'm not going to go shopping on camera, so uh, uh, maybe for the next episode we'll do something like that. But for now, let's go ahead and head out and we'll see what this, uh, this agent has for us today. <clears throat> now a lot of times they'll have you mine something that like wouldn't normally exist or whatnot and it's an interesting kind of thing here so okay there we go I bet the warp drive is active <laughs> sorry I'm in kind of like a confrontational mood today um, but yeah so uh, we're off hopefully we won't run into any trouble while we're doing this particular mission. I'm not a huge fan of taking my mining ship out of system. Um, I mean, I kind of know the ebb and flow of this particular system, and I'm pretty comfortable uh, using it here. Just like a short hop out, get some stuff, hop back, 
Uh, if there's any trouble, just kind of hang out in the station or go do something else. But in other systems, it's a little different, other things to consider. Now, the nice thing about doing um, the mining missioning is that you're not only... Well, essentially, you're getting paid for the ore that you're mining. So it's not necessarily like uh, you have to sell it yourself and transport it and refine it and all that you just like bring back the ore and then they give you money and if you do it fast enough they give you extra so that's always a bonus um now the downside of course is that with uh with the um lack of combat that goes with this particular mission and i don't know they might do some combat with it just to mix it up but I kind of doubt it. Um, obviously you won't get the drops that are worth like a million credits randomly and uh, things of that nature. So that can be a little bit disappointing and a little bit unfortunate, but you know, that's all right. We'll deal. Not a big, not a, not a problem. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can uh, hear that in the background, but my roommate's watching uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, um, the original series from Nickelodeon. I, I kind of got him addicted to it, and uh, so he, he'd never seen any of it before, and we've kind of been watching it nonstop, and uh, he's into book three now, so we'll see, we'll see how much longer it takes to finish that out. I'm, I'm guessing not more than another week. <laughs> oh, a little bit sensitive on the mouse there. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you haven't checked that series out, it, it's a lot of fun. It's really good. Um, I just own the DVDs. I don't know that it's necessarily on like Netflix or Hulu or anything, but it's worth a look. So. Alright, so let's go ahead and dock up. Now, technically, you can talk to the agents before you're docked. I don't know. I don't like to do that, because the mission's kind of got the timing set as if you're, like, at the station. So I like to go to the station, talk to the agent, and then go do the mission and come back. That way I know I have enough time to actually, you know, go do the mission and come back before the, uh, the shorter, like, get it done sooner and I'll give you more money time. <coughs> But I mean, you can you can do it however you want. Of course, the uh, let's see, science and industry. I think it's people and places. You go to agents. And basically, you can talk to all the agents you've met before and see what they're up to and if they have any missions for you. Mostly, if they have missions for you, they're not usually up for just chatting. I don't know, they're all business. What can you do? All right. So we actually have a couple mining missions available. This is the one we were looking at, so let's talk to her. Yep, that's the whole if you decline or fail mission thing. All right. I've just gotten word about a deposit of Agamini in this system. Now, we're not really sure what use we might make of it, but a number of our competitors seem to want it for research, so that means we need to move on it too. Go out to the bookmark I'll provide for you, and mine every unit of the stuff you find there for us to study, before anyone else gets their hands on it. Alright, so, um... Apparently it's an extremely toxic ore. Fortunately, it is also extremely rare. It can be mined safely from a starship. Pro proves very deadly when handled directly unless one takes extremely expensive safety precautions, which more than negates any profit to be made from refining the stuff. And so for this reason, even black market operators generally won't deal in it. And it is never found for sale on the open market. Well, there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and accept that. Uh, 
Um, all right, so let's go ahead and undock. To the appropriate location. So yeah, basically we head to this site, we mine the uh, stuff that they're wanting us to mine, and we bring it back. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but uh, you know, occasionally there's complications. Hopefully that won't be the case in this particular instance, but you never know. You just never know. It's an unpredictable unforgiving universe most of the time but hey it's a lot of fun so why not okay so yeah I was looking at possibly doing um, starting to train into ice mining and doing a bit of that uh, I had plans to do that in combination with a um, like planetary mining sort of thing You okay? Uh, apparently I'm missing something. Beacon there. I don't, I don't see anything down here. There is a rock formation. I'm assuming it's somewhere around there. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I was looking into doing ice mining, and with the new mining ship mechanics, like, it used to be the Mackinac was, like, the hardcore exhumer for ice mining, and it just, like, rocked it. Um, they've sort of changed it now, so that all the ships perform pretty much evenly, uh, across the board, and you just have different play styles, essentially, that go with it. Like, um, one's going to have a larger cargo hold, one's going to be more durable, and uh, one you can actually kind of split your focus, so you can mine multiple rocks at the same time instead of just one. Um, so obviously the Hulk is the multi-miner, the... Uh, I believe the Procure is the more durable one, and the Mackinac is the the larger cargo hold one now. Uh, but it looks like the Hulk actually has a little bit of an advantage in ice mining with the new mechanics, so... Uh, it looks like I might need to get a second Hulk, potentially, to do ice mining in. Although... Now that I think about it, I don't think that's the case. Because I can switch the turrets on it pretty easily without any real problem. Um, there we go. This one we can start mining now. Um, yeah, the range on these things is uh, 15 kilometers, so once you're within that range, you can usually go ahead and start mining. Um, but yeah, now that I think about it, I should be able to switch the equipment. Like, I was thinking I'd have to put different uh, rigs on, but I don't think that's actually the case because I was going to do mining drone augmenters for uh, just mining ore normally and then I don't think there's anything actually specifically for ice mining Yeah, 
I know it's a mission, but it just pays to keep up the, uh, the good habits. Make sure there's nothing out there that, you know, shouldn't be. Um, so yeah, I was thinking I'd actually have to get another Hulk, but uh, I don't think I do, now that I think about it. Uh, what I will need to do is have a different set of implants, um, but that basically just means I need to train a little bit in jump cloning, and then I'll have one clone for ore mining and one clone for ice mining. Um, so that's not a big deal. Alright, so yeah. Hey, on screen, problem solved. Conundrum... Conundred. Yeah, let's go with that. It's a new word, guys. Just accept it. <laughs> so anyway, um, basically we're going to mine out the Augam... Augamine? Augamine? Let's go with Augamine. That sounds alright. Uh, there's honestly not a lot there. Now usually these will run, I think it's like 3,000 for a whole cycle. So if we close the that off. Yep. The there you go. And now we can go turn in our stuff. can't do what while warping. Sometimes. Just says the most random things. I don't think there's any more out there. There's just the three rocks, so that just work. And now that we're in warp, we can shut those off. Alright. Uh, let's take a look at this. Was there actually, like, a, an amount, or...? Two thousand two hundred and fifty. Yeah, we're good. Got two thousand six hundred and seventy-nine, and it took, like, five seconds. It actually took longer to fly out to it than it did to actually mine it. Gotta love it. That's what happens when you have really, really good mining skills. Um, so yeah, ideally for a mission like this, you would have... Uh, you would outfit your ship differently. Complete mission. Oh, right. I need to put that actually in the... Take it out of the ore hold and put it in the item hanger. Now we can complete the mission. Hold on. Since when? Okay, see, I'm, I'm very confused at this point. Item hanger. Okay, so apparently there's more out there. We need 7,500 of it. Well, alright. Thought we were done, but I guess not. I uh, will fly out there and see what the heck we're supposed to find. <clears throat> Y'all are just confusing, you know that? It's not okay. I wonder what those anomalies are. Let's see. Um, it doesn't want to say. That's going to be uh, Ice Belt, more than likely. That I'm not sure on. Just not sure. All 
Right. Back to it then, I suppose. Let's uh, pop open this. Bring back up our directional scanner. Let's get these babies rolling again. Alright, so, note for you guys, um, read the directions before you go to turn in the mission. Uh, apparently that, that part helps. Yeah, so, we were good, it, we need 7,500 units of it, which would be 2,250 cubic meters. So, that's kind of where, well, where I went wrong with that. And, you know, that's my bad. I should have been paying better attention. Anyway, let's keep scanning as we get closer to this thing. And honestly, let's go ahead and launch the Hornets. Uh, just in case. That way they're out and ready to go if we get attacked by anything. Yeah, there's just nothing out there. Okay. Well, we'll scan here again in a second. Do do do. do. Um. So yeah, basically if you get, alright, uh, we were talking about jump clones, so let me explain that a little bit. Uh, essentially, normally you have your character and then you'll have a single clone that's like a backup in case your character dies. Um, you can, uh, you basically respawn in your clone body instead of um, your dead body. Which makes sense. Oh yeah, apparently there are more of them, okay. Um, and so you can have... Uh, so you have this backup, essentially, just in case, you know, the worst happens and you get potted or whatnot. However, you can also have what are called jump clones, um, which is basically like you have your one clone at the one station, and uh, you can actually have like an additional clone at a different place, or even at the same place, uh, depending on skill levels and whatnot. And you can actually use these, you can just transfer your consciousness from one clone to another. Uh, without having to die. So it's actually a pretty handy means of transportation like all the way across systems and stuff. Um, but the, the advantage that I see most in it is that you can actually have a different set of implants in each of your different clones. So for instance, like you could have a clone that is has an implant set up for skill training, and then you can have a clone that's set up for ore mining, you can have one for ice mining, you can have one for combat, and it's just some of the implants will overlap and be the same, but some of them will be different, and that way you can always have the best implants for whatever you're doing, you just jump into a new clone, and you're good to go. Um, let's see if there's any more Algamine out there somewhere. Oh, there is. Excellent. So we'll start approaching that and lock the target here. And given amounts, this one's probably done. The asteroid is we'll let that one run a little bit longer. 
D scan. Uh, but yeah, so essentially you um, can have an even better setup than normal. The asteroid is depleted. Without having to like constantly switch out your implants or kind of like hedge and only have one set and it's like a mix of things that make you decent for several different purposes but not great at any of them. Uh, so it's just a nice way to go between the different um, of the different professions without uh, too much difficulty. And of course your skill level will determine how many jump clones that you can have active at any one time. I believe the most is um, of course, you'd have your active clone and then five uh, inactive clones at any given time. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's not do this. Okay. Alright guys, so apparently my ship's freaking out as far as like how to actually get over to that asteroid. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and cut out here, and we'll come back once, you know, my ship figures out what the heck it's doing. So uh, I'll be right back guys. Alright guys, and we are back. Now of course we've made it to the other side of this rock formation, and there's just dead air quotes, which you guys totally didn't see, but that's alright, because I told you. <laughs> and so yeah uh, here's this there's apparently like a little cloud thing here I'm not sure what that's about but okay and we're mining a little bit more of this uh, strange stuff that they want us to mine so yeah there we go um, so basically we're almost done getting pretty close to what we need here and I think this should finish off the requirements uh, but we'll see uh, it could be a little bit close. Uh, well, that's almost a thousand there, so that should take care of it. But yeah, I think this will take care of it once these two are done. Uh, which is good because I don't actually see any more out here. Uh, did a scan for it again, but I think these are the only two. Yep. Those are the only two left. Oh, wait. And we should be able to get them by canceling the these. Is depleted. Okay, okay, yeah, it just caps it at 750, so. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's head back to the station. And now we want to go ahead and have these guys dock, return to the drone bay. Yeah, the nice thing about having a slow charging warp drive is that you can usually get your drones recovered uh, before you jump into hyperspace, uh, especially uh, if you have them just sort of idling and circling you. <coughs> So, no real complications, except that I can't count, apparently. <laughs> um, but hey, you know, a nice quiet mining mission is not necessarily a bad thing. So, yeah. Always a bonus. So we'll go ahead and turn this in, we'll call it an episode, and, uh, and that'll be that. Man, you just gotta love the construction of these Caldaria stations, though. Like they're a little awkward and a little weird, but I like the angles and it's just nice. It's just nice. I think it's nice. I know some people are fans of the other architectural stuff, but all right. So let's go ahead and toss this into the atom hangar. and we'll turn it in. Complete mission. I bet you will. 
Alright, and so there we go, guys. That was, that was all there was to it. Look at my wallet. Load. Yep, 65,000 plus 76,000 as the bonus for finishing early. So, there you go, guys. That's, uh, that's the mining missioning side of things. Uh, if you guys are wanting to try this, I would recommend uh, either a faster ship than this or potentially putting like a micro warp drive or an afterburner um, on one of the slower ships. Uh, it looks like most of the mining that you do in this particular mission and probably ones like it's going to be really only going to require two uh, mining lasers or strip miners so maybe one of the two turreted versions um, that way you can do two rocks at a time and then you didn't really need a whole lot of combat support but you never can tell when someone's just gonna pop up and uh, start shooting at you so uh, it doesn't hurt to have some heavier combat drones and uh, a little bit better shield tanking or uh, whatever kind of tanking you prefer uh, as far as that so yeah thanks for watching guys i hope that you've enjoyed this episode that's been at least a little bit informative um and of course be sure to tune in next week for another great episode of evolution so remember to like if you enjoyed the episode subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet so you can get updates on what's going on with the channel and uh when new videos come out and such and as always, guys, I will talk at you later.